I'd like to introduce you to the newest addition to my family, and this is Little Baby Toaster. Here are some clips of the kittens in the cattery when we were trying to choose my cat. I wanted a bi-colored kitten, so I chose this little guy with the white-tipped ears. He decided to sleep on my lap, so that's how I knew he was supposed to be for me. Um, after a couple months, he was officially ready to be picked up. So I went back to the cattery and here you can see the kittens, but a little bit older with their moms. And this is Snowy. He's again with the one with the white ears. And I thought I was gonna get a calm kitty because he was sleeping on my lap, but I was very wrong. Look at him, see right there, um, batting other cats in the faces. He was very energetic when I saw him. I was like, wow, it was night and day. There he goes, batting another cat in the face. This is Toaster the first night I brought him to the house. He was eager to get out of his carrier and eventually I let his big brother Snowy meet Toaster. I was reading online how to introduce cats to each other. I know there is a long process, but I did it fairly quickly and luckily it worked out. A part of cat introduction is that you're supposed to associate each cat with a good feeling of each other. So like when it's time to play, they can be together with each other. Or like when they're eating, they can eat far apart so they can smell each other's scent along with their food to associate the other cat with a good experience so that they start knowing uh, that that other creature isn't going to do them harm but they're actually a good thing when they're around. Also to get each cat familiar, I let Snowy smell Toaster's blanket and carrier so he could get used to what Toaster smelled like and vice versa. Toaster was a kitten so he really didn't care what was going on around him. This is Snowy just watching Toaster play. Things about bonding also is that you want the primary cat to watch the new cat play so it knows how the new cat moves. Kittens are very flexible so it's very easy to adjust a kitten. And here is Toaster on his first night home from the cattery. I slept with him the first night just to keep him company. He was so cute whenever I was trying to sleep. He would just stare at me a little and then he would try to go back to sleep. He never tried to wake me up. Um, I thought it was the cutest thing. And I noticed he had some discharge coming from his nose and from his eyes. So during this time, it was the holidays and he was still very playful and eating normally. So I decided to wait until after the holidays were over and then took him to the vet. It turned out that he did have an infection, so the vet gave him some oral antibiotics and some eye drops. I never gave a cat medication before. Eventually, his infection went away. It was the first time I had to give any type of medication to a cat, so thank goodness for YouTube for teaching me how to administer the medication. I learned a lot. Out of all the mothers giving birth in the cattery, Toaster's mom was the last one to get pregnant and give birth. And she gave birth to three ragdoll kittens and they were all bicolored. And they were the biggest ones in the cattery, even though they were the youngest. So I think Toaster and his brothers are going to be big cats when they grow up. And when I was in the cattery, I saw Toaster's mom in person and boy, her eyes were mesmerizing blue and doll-like as if it wasn't real. Completely stunning. I also about I also asked the breeder about Toaster's dad. They had to keep him in another room because they can't stay in the same place with the kittens and the moms because all the males were just thinking about were mating. So they had to keep them separated. Um she did show, the breeder did show me a picture and I also asked about Toaster's dad's personality and she said that he was very mellow and Toaster's dad uh, pretty much looks like Toaster now. Uh, the brown pattern on his face matches his dad. If Toaster turns out to be very mellow when he grows up, I wouldn't mind that at all. Toaster is a cutie either way. I heard online that kittens take the personality of their dad, but I don't know if that's true. And I don't know why, but I always keep recording Toaster using the bathroom. I just thought it was so cute. I just think it's like how moms record everything that their baby does because it's just so fascinating and adorable. 
So yeah, even when he's just using the bathroom, I'll record him. And if he's just sitting and looking at me, I'll record him and take pictures. Just whatever he does. I didn't even know Snowy was there looking at him. He just likes to look. Snowy's just an observer. Um, he'll look at everything Toaster is doing and look at everybody from afar. Snowy's just a people watcher. And by the way, Snowy is such a good big brother to Toaster. At this time during the videos, the cats weren't getting along quite yet. They were still trying to get to know each other. And that blue toy was a toy the breeder gave me along with some other good things like small batches of wet food, dry food, cat attracts, litter from the cattery, cat food coupons, and a flyer for discounted pet insurance. And this was just me giving antibiotics to Toaster. So on YouTube, I learned that you gotta squish the kitty gently to get them not to move. Obviously, I wasn't perfect at first. This was like my third time giving him his antibiotics. Here, I was squishing Toaster gently just to hold him down. Then I took the syringe and placed it in the back portion of his tongue so the cat doesn't taste the medication. In the video, you can see Toaster foam at the mouth a little bit. It happens when they can taste the medicine. Um, and this was a monumental clip because it was the first time the cats played with each other. I wasn't sure if they were fighting or playing at first, but yeah, they were playing. And I was just like, oh, it's finally, they're finally getting along, big brother and little brother. Toaster always wanted to play with Snowy, but Snowy was like, mm, not today, not right now, I don't know you yet. When I first brought Toaster home, he was always playing with things. I'm glad I already had cat toys that I could play with him with because he was just playing for hours. I remember when we just got him, he was playing with a rat wand toy and all of a sudden his head started twitching for a good 30 seconds. Luckily I recorded it and showed the vet and he said he didn't think it was a seizure so I felt a lot better. And ever since then, he's never had that happen to him. He's such a happy, playful kitten that he would accidentally turn on the Roomba from time to time. And I also remember when he was young, with that same mouse wand toy, he somehow got that wand toy and started playing with it around an outlet that was plugged in and it caused a spark. Like it even burned the outer part of the outlet a little bit. Luckily, nobody got hurt. But oh my god, cats can get into so much mischief in such little time. And I'm happy Toaster had Snowy to play with because if I didn't, I would have been super exhausted trying to entertain this kitten all by myself. Snowy would just match Toaster's energy and they would start running around the house. And I didn't think Snowy would be such a good older brother. Um, to Toaster because in the beginning when I only had Snowy, he was a very standoffish cat and he would not want to be pet or to be carried. He'd only want to be in the same room as you. Not really a too affectionate cat. But towards Snowy, he would always groom him, be close to him. He would purr with him and play with him. This is when I attempted to take Toaster outside. I had this carrier that was a backpack and looked like a bubble. So he was able to see a lot of the things outside. I would take him out while I would walk my dogs just in that backpack. So he could at least see the sun and see what the outside world was like. Smell all the smells. He actually really liked it. Um, I would take him out every day in that backpack. I did try to take him out of the carrier just to walk around. But I figured it was best for him to stay in the little backpack because he still didn't know his name when I called him. And if something were to happen, he would just run away. And since he's so small, he can get under fences. Eventually, I want to take him outside for walks, just probably not right now. That was just a little dip in the water so that he knows what the outside feels like. A couple months after I got Toaster, I had to relocate to start a new job and because of that, I wanted to trial the area first so I got an Airbnb that allowed cats. I was really stressed because I heard cats, when they move to a different place, they usually don't like it. They get really stressed. Sometimes it gets so stressed that they could get UTIs or other diseases. So I tried to bring a lot of their toys, scratchers, wubbies, blankets, 
so that when they move to the new place, they can smell their scent and it would be familiar to them. And I kept the same litter box with the same used litter so they can at least feel a little bit more comfortable. When I first moved to the Airbnb, the cats were a little bit scared, but after a while, they did seem to get more comfortable with the location, enough so that I felt comfortable enough to leave them alone while I went to work. I'm glad I do have two cats so then when I'm not around, they can keep each other company and have a less chance of getting separation anxiety, which I don't think they have. I don't know if it's just me, but I think the cats like it better when the dogs weren't around. The dogs were technically my parents, so they stayed at the house while I had to move. And I think my cats liked it a lot better because at the house, it was a bit chaotic. At my parents, they had a dog door and the dogs would go in and out as they please, use the bathroom and then just go in and out whenever they wanted to. But with the cats around, I had to keep them in a room when the back door was open to prevent them from going outside. And when I was home, I would let the cats out, but close the dog door, but then the dogs would have accidents in the house. Since they're at the Airbnb now, the cats can roam around more freely 24 seven and go wherever they want. Then I did have to move to another place because you can't stay in an Airbnb forever. Again, I was totally worried and I wasn't sure if the cats would be okay with the move again, but I did bring all their belongings like before and at the new place, we haven't had any issues, which is lucky for me. But when they were at the Airbnb, they did catch um, cat COVID, but that was towards the end of my stay. I think it wasn't anything to do with the Airbnb. My friend did come to visit me and before she visited me, she was petting a stray cat. And I think that's how my cats caught cat COVID. It was really scary at first because both my cats were throwing up and they weren't eating. So I had to take them to the vet and it was on the weekend, so I had to find a place that was open. Initially, I just took Toaster because he was still a kitten at the time and he didn't eat for 24 hours. So I took him and they ran tests and they gave him fluid. I was super scared for Toaster because he was still a baby and you know, he's still growing. Um, and I figured whatever they had, they both had it. I thought it was because they were like nibbling on this fake tree, but yeah, the test shows that it was cat COVID. I wasn't too worried with Toaster though because he was still eating, uh, just not as much as he use, usually does. But you know, my cats were still throwing up. And then when I went to the vet, they just said that, oh, um, it, it basically kind of just heals itself. So they gave Toaster fluids and then they gave me medication to stimulate um, Toaster's appetite, which I gave him and they eventually got better. Toaster is now seven months old and he looks a lot bigger than before. I had to take him back to my parents because I had to stay there the weekend. Um, so I brought my cats with me and my mom said Toaster got so much bigger, which I think he did too. It, he got big in such a short amount of time. I thought he was looking the same for a long while and then I feel like I slept and then he just changed to a whole different cat. But yeah, he's a lot bigger now. I heard ragdolls don't fully grow until for about like four years. Four years, yeah. And um, Kittens are usually up until six months. So I think Toaster's technically a teenager. Uh, but yeah, he. I don't regret getting the cats at all. They're perfect. Um, no complaints, really. And then I actually follow Toaster's two other brothers. They're on Instagram and I see what they're up to and how they're growing and it's totally beautiful. I was never really a cat person and I was always a dog person. I thought cats scared me because initially because they like move swiftly all of a sudden. But in December 2020, I didn't want a cat. I needed a cat. And if you're a dog person, you'll probably be a cat person. You just have to give it time. 
And that's all the updates I have for now, being a new cat mom. Thanks for watching. Bye.